good morning. How many of you are thinking where you gonna retire after Kuwait or after you know your service when you end already your term in your work? Where are you going to settle? Which place? Ah, you're going. You're going to our hometown. <laughs> yes. Where are you going to retire? I entitled the last message on John 17, On My Way to Heaven. Let me read to you our main text for today. Thank you for our backdrop, our scripture readings that was read. Thank you, Brother Luke. John 17, 24 to 26. This is the last portion of the high priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And this have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. Let us pray. Father God, it is amazing that you would allow the Apostle John to watch and hear you pray. So that through that prayer, today, us who believe in your name and those still who are going to believe will be encouraged, will come to know your real heart pertaining to us, your creation. And God, what a wonderful, oh Lord God, prayer. You desire what is best for us. We don't even know sometimes, many times, what is best for us. That's why we pick the second best. But Lord, you know exactly what is best for us and you desire for us to be united with you in glory. Today, O oh Lord God, bless us through your word. Use me, O oh Lord God, your sermon. I'm willing, O oh Lord God, to speak only what you have already deposited into my heart. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. I took some, a little research and look at the top 25 countries for retirement in 2024, but I will give you only the top 10. So what they did, this survey, they considered these four categories. They considered health, the per capita spent on health care. They considered the quality of life, happiness, happiness levels, water, sanitation, environment. They considered the material well-being, the per capita income, income equality, and employment levels. They considered also the retirement finances, the government debts, interest rates, inflation, and taxes. And these are the 10 countries that are best for retirement as the survey says in 2024. The first one is Norway at 83%, Switzerland at 82%, Iceland at 81%, Ireland at 80%, Luxembourg is 79%, Netherlands at 79% as well, Australia at 78%, New Zealand at 77%, Germany at 76%, and German, Denmark at 76%. But you know, as you, cons as you look at this percentage, I will tell you frankly, all of those will score poorly when compared to the place where you are going. If you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ as I am, I am on my way to heaven. And so do you. We are on our way to heaven. And reality, <laughs> We all experience difficulty in this life. You know, politics or politicians try to divide us. You know, the wealthy, the powerful tries to squeeze us 
get profit out of us. You know, it's, it's difficult. This is not an easy life. But the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to get us into the right perspective. If we will not have an idea what Jesus Christ is praying for us, what is his desire for us as his children, then we might be lost. But it is all over the scripture. You know, in John 17, we call it the high priestly prayer of Jesus because Jesus fulfills the role of a priest, the role of a prophet, the role of a king. And you can see that in his prayer. And this is unique. This is unparalleled because Jesus alone can fulfill these different roles. No other one. He is a king. He is a prophet. He is a teacher. He is a priest. And in this priestly prayer, we can see that Jesus serves as the ultimate high priest. He prayed for us, and he is still interceding for us. See, when Stephen was being stoned, and in that moment, he would look up, and he saw Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. No wonder even if we went astray. We go here and there, and we ignore God, but still we find ourselves in the presence of God. And you know that. You know that experientially, uh, personally, because you try to avoid God, but even in Kuwait, God is running after you, pursuing you. So as a king, Jesus rules over all creation with righteousness and with justice. So when he prayed, Father, thank you for giving these people. You, you have given them to me. You know, even though he is saying the Father has given, given us to Jesus, to him, yet in reality, he knew it that he created us. He is our creator. He is our maker. He is our source of life. So as a prophet, Jesus functions as the ultimate one. You know, if prophet Samuel, when he prophesied, all his prophecies were fulfilled. How much more Jesus? He is prophesying our future in his prayer. And he is going to fulfill it as well. And when he asks the Father, he knows exactly what is the Father's will. That's why he, when he prays, praying us to be in heaven, we sure we will end there if we receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. So let me give you a summary of his prayer for us. First, the Lord Jesus Christ prayed for us. He prayed for our preservation. He said, Holy Father, keep them in your name. Verse 11, he prayed for our jubilation. He said that they may have my joy made full in themselves. It is Christ's desire for us to enjoy life. You know, to enjoy the journey. That's why me and my husband, we are enjoying our journey here in Kuwait. We love this country. When we went to Saudi Arabia last month, we were so happy to be in Saudi Arabia. Like it is the best place in the world. Why? Because we've been praying long time to be able to step in that country because we believe that we have a portion of harvest in that country. And we will Go back. They gave us a multiple entry visa for one year. So <laughs> we're happy. What else did he pray? He prayed for our liberation. Keep them from the evil one. What else he prayed? He prayed for our sanctification. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth in verse 17. What else did he pray? He prayed for our unification, that they may all be one, in verse 21, and that we talked about last week. This, I mean, today, this morning, we will talk about number six and number seven. He prayed for association. Father, I, de I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am. That's why I said, I am on my way to heaven. 
Are you? And number seven, glorification that they may see my glory. So the Lord Jesus Christ commanded his followers. He said in Matthew 6, 20 to 21, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth, but in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in or steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I love what we sang today. You know, that we were redeemed, we were empowered, we were adopted, we were chosen by God. We were handpicked. We are not an accident. We are not accidents. In Colossians 3.1, he encouraged us furthermore. He said through the apostle, For therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. Keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. See, the Apostle Paul encouraged us, but he also warned us. And in 1 John 2, I want to read this verse from the Apostle John. He said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. And at, L at LCC, we are big in abiding in Christ. We are big in our union with Christ. And literally, as a believer here in this country for now more than three, uh, now I am three decades, Pastor Allen is 32 years here, union with Christ is what keeps us going here. We cannot do this alone. So godly men had, have always longed for heaven. In the Old Testament, David expressed his heart Yearning for heaven when he wrote in Psalm 16, verse 11, he said, In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. If anyone here is sad, if anyone here is lonely, discouraged, go back to Psalms. Go back to the Bible. Again, spend time with him. And these verses that we read experientially was really for David, but it is also for me. I experienced the joy of the Lord. I resolved in my heart that if I am lonely, I will go back to the Word. You know, I am a melancholy by personality. You know, not like my husband is the, chol the choleric, sanguine type, very outgoing. I am an introvert. And if you are an introvert, little things can discourage you. But, you know, in my walk with the Lord, I said, uh, there was a point in my life in the past that I said, I should stop this. You know, when I feel like I'm discouraged, somebody, I am offended, I'm sad, I will stay in my room, you know, put the blanket over, all over me, and then just hide and cry. <laughs> I will stop this now, not anymore. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, at her pleasure forever, and it worked. So now, my husband can, cannot offend me anymore. It's either we get even, or we both rejoice. <laughs> so not only in the Old Testament, but even in the New Testament, Paul wrote to the Philippians, and this is his desire. He said, I am hard-pressed between the two having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. The other day, we were talking about that. My husband said, I really want to, to, to be the first to go to heaven. But he said, but I was thinking, if I leave you alone and I'll go first, who will assist you? I said, that, that's nice. So what is your resolution? He said, let's just go together. I said, let's pray for that. So let's pray for that, that we will go together. So 
my kids were funny when I'm telling them, you know, me and dad are always going on a mission together. We're flying together, whatever. I said, so guys, prepare. Maybe the Lord will take us together. I said, parents, please stop talking like that. I mean, we are excited. That is the place, the best place to be. You know, when you're getting older, you're no longer like, you know, those uh, in your 30s, 40s, or even to the 20s, when you go to a place, you want to explore the place, look at what's beautiful in that place. In our age, we want to go to the place, we want to just look for a coffee shop and sit <laughs> and talk, you know? Not anymore, you know, like forget about the museum, forget about all those things. We just want to sit and talk to the people that we, you know, want to connect with. That is more important for us than the place itself. Okay, so also the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So he doesn't mind to go early to the presence of the Lord and depart from this earth. But of course, it is the Lord's will. It is not us. Who decides? Even if we want to go together, but it is the Lord who had, who has the final decision. The Apostle Paul, in his triumphant epita, he wrote, and this is what he wrote to Timothy: "For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally." There is laid for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So like David and the Apostle Paul, we as Christians should long for heaven. Since everything precious to us is there. Our heavenly body is there. Jesus is there. That's why Jesus taught us to pray our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. So, the fellow us as fellow believers, we should be desiring heaven. We should not be scared of heaven. That is the best place to be. No tax and no work. You know, but there is food. It is everything that you need. Heaven is the place. I mean, you know, it's, we are in a very uh, different situation here in Kuwait. We're in, yeah, we have work, but the situation is not really great. So you are just thinking temporary. Just how many years should just I stay in this country? This is just, you know, a passing by place. This is not really a place for you that you will desire to settle. But then, though that is the reality, God is giving us, you know, encouraging us, you have a better place really laid for you. Because even if you go back to your own countries, taxes are high, electricity are high, groceries are high, everything is high. You know, in our time right now, the, the new generation, the 20s, they will be the generation without homes, why? Wherever you go, homes, houses, mortgages are very expensive. It's very high. Even our brethren in the UK, they are trying to mortgage house. Either that a small apartment with three small bedrooms and one bathroom is already half a million you know, pounds. How can you afford with, a, you know, with a just... Um, a meager income, how can you afford to buy a home anymore? So, and, the, and, that, and the, the inflation is high, so whatever, whenever you borrow from the bank, mind you, you will be affected. When inflation goes up, then the percentage of that interest will be higher and higher. So, thank God, you know, we have to set our minds on the right track, that we are not really pitiful. We have a better future. We have a better retirement place that we don't need to worry about. All we have to do is to get serious with our relationship with Jesus. Amen? So with our relationship with Jesus. Because we all know something about heaven. 
but we all know what the Bible says about heaven to one degree or another. But it's easy for us to get caught up with the description of heaven and miss the person of heaven. Because the reality, heaven is not just a place, but it is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself is the heart of heaven. Jesus himself is the heart of heaven, and Jesus himself is the glory of heaven. And we will never see God, you have not need to understand this, we will not see God the Father because God the Father is invisible. Whenever you read the scripture, you will just see, when you go to heaven, you will see Jesus. But you will not see in any scripture that you will see God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We will never see that God the Father or the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but we will see Christ. But we will see Christ. We as believers are headed to heaven, and we will see him glorified there. That's why we have an idea that we too, we will have a glorified body. And not only that we will see him, but we will share in his glory. We will enter into that love and joy and satisfaction and fulfillment that is beyond comprehension. Isn't it that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? So we have actually a visa to heaven. We have a visa to heaven. So we will be reunited with our Savior. So the reality that we will be reunited in heaven with Christ and each other is the subject of this last portion of John 17, the Lord's high priestly prayer. So we will talk about that today now, describing the fellowship of the future glory. So number one, the believers... Be unite, eternally united with him. When Jesus prayed, he prayed that we, the believers now, those who receive the Lord Jesus Christ and those who will still receive the Lord Jesus Christ, be eternally united with him. So, you know, when, when the governments and the immigration officers issues visas, there are, you know, parameters. You can only stay for one year. And... It is a multiple entry, but a maximum of three months per entry. This one is an eternal union. He said in John 17, 24, A Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. That is a passionate plea. That those whom the Father has given to him might be with him in his eternal glory in heaven. And this is the final petition of Christ's prayer. From a human perspective, there is no reason that will justify such an incredible privilege. Because why would Jesus desire you? Why would Jesus desire me? Paul reminded the Corinthians that not many were wise according to the flesh. Not many mighty. Not many noble. Even worse, according to the book of Romans, we were God's enemies. And in Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 6, this is what we can read. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. This is who we are before we receive Christ. We were dead in trespasses and sin in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and whereby nature children of wrath just us the others. So we were separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Because we sinned, we fall short of God's glory. 
but the marvelous truth of redemption, and we sang that today, Jesus is our redeemer. He is our, you know, uh, the author of our redemption is no other than him, the Lord Jesus Christ. But God, Ephesians 2, 4 to 7, who is rich in mercy. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. By grace I have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. You know, all over the scripture, our theme for the year, communion and commitment, or when we say communion, our union with Christ is all over the scripture. And while I was meditating on this truly, because I am united with Christ and because Christ is in heaven, I will go there too. Because Jesus said, I am in you, you in me. That is my home. That is my retirement place. I don't have to worry if I don't have a house. I have a small house, and that is enough, you know? So Romans 5, 8 to 10 also said, but God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And all of us are aware and all of us are experiencing that's the very challenging situation we are in. Not only that there is a war between Israel and Hamas, but also there is tension in the Red Sea. There is tension between the other countries with China. It's like tension here and there. And even there are tension within the country itself. And tension within, tension without. And if you too have tension from within your heart, come on, let's wake up. There is hope, and that is in Jesus. So not only does God forgive repentant sinners, but he also adopts them as his children. The truth that prompted the Apostle John to exclaim in wonder he said, see how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God. And that is wh what we are, such as we are. We are children of the Most High God. That's why the glorification of believers in heaven is the ultimate goal of the plan of salvation. His ultimate goal is to take you with him in glory and to be with him eternally. That's why his prayer, God, Father, those that you have given me, I want them to be with me where I am. What a joy. You know, what a joy, right? That he loves us, he wants us to belong to him. You know, it is not difficult to understand if we as believers want to be with Christ. It's not difficult to understand. But it is totally different and it's staggering to imagine and to realize that he wants to be with us. Christ wants to be with you eternally. Amen. I mean, it's okay. If we are the one who wants to be with Christ, but he wants to be with us. It's not only that because the Father gave us to him, that he wants to be with us. But he really desires to be with us eternally. And for me, that is the greatest news that can give me full 100% encouragement. 
Jesus wants me. Jesus wants you. Not only temporarily, but eternally. He wants to be with you. You know, sometimes when you grow older and you, like, you snore, sometimes you don't want to sleep with the people who snore. Like, okay, let's sleep in the other room. I'll sleep in the other room. Jesus wants to be with me, whatever is the condition. <laughs> Thank God I will have a glorified body there. Right? Thank God everything will be perfect there. Thank God. And I am just encouraged that he prayed that the believers be eternally united, not with the angels, but with him. With him. With him. And we need to understand this. You know, the praise they whom you have given me expresses again the reason that believers are special to Christ. They are a love gift. They are not a burden. They are not a work. You know, when the Father give the believers to Jesus Christ, they are not a work to Christ. He don't treat us as a burden or a work. He treat us as a gift, a love gift from the Father. That is who we are. To Christ, we are a love gift. That way, his prayer for us is so affectionate because he never treat us as a burden. He treat us as a love gift. Number two, he prayed that the believers may behold his glory eternally. Not only to be there and watch and see the glory of the Son just you know, not like the glory here on earth because his glory here was veiled with flesh. No, not only that. John 17, 24, B says that they may behold my glory which you have given me. Not only to see his glory, but to share his glory. In Philippians 3, 20 to 21, we can read, the Apostle Paul said, For our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body. You will be conformed to his glorious body. I will be conformed to his glorious body. <laughs> the la last night as I was lying, again, my back is, you know, is uh, itchy. And I said, oh, even if I scratch it, it will mean nothing because my nerves here are dead because of that surgery. So I said, Lord, thank you that this will pass. This is not permanent. <laughs> Soon I will have a glorified body. I don't have to worry anymore about those things. So I said, Thank you, Lord, that you will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. You know, we don't know yet how it feels to have that glorified body. No need to do makeup, you know. No need moisturizer and whatever. You know, no wrinkles. You don't have to worry. You will not age. You will not grow old. We don't know that because we are in this corruptible body. So it is truly glorious. I am excited to go to heaven. Are you? <laughs> are you? So that's why throughout all eternity, the song of the redeemed as they behold the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ will be worthy of the lamb that was slain. To receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That will be our song. Because indeed, the all-wise God decided to take us with him. And not only to be with him, but also to share in his glory. He is not withholding anything good for us, his children. He is not. He is not a jealous God. 
He is an all-out God in His love for us. And that is amazing. Because we know already, if the Father did not withhold His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, He sent Him to rescue us. What else would He withhold for us? And the Father and the Son have the same heart. And that is our redemption, our salvation. That's why when we reach heaven, He will not withhold anything good for us except His deity. He alone is God. We cannot. We are created beings. Yet we will share in His glory. And for me, that is amazing. That is already over the top. I cannot thank Him enough already for desiring to be with me and allowing me to enjoy His glory. Third and the last, he also asked that the believers bask in his love eternally. John 17, sorry, there is a typo error, 25a, it says, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And this have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. See, in this world, we experience a lot of people who say love us, but ditch us. We thought we love, they truly love us at first, but after a few years, the love diminished. The love fades away. It fades with age. Think that my husband's love for me does not fade with age. (laughs) Or else I will complain. (laughs) He, He is patient with me. The closing verses of this magnificent prayer shows Christ's confidence that the righteous father would grant his request. And that is his desire, that we will bask we will delight, we will enjoy in His love. And what is the model? The love of the Father to the Son and the love of the Son to the Father. When we reach heaven and we are already, we put on already this glorified body, we are changed already emotionally. The, no more, you know, the, the up and down of our emotion. I love Jesus now, I love Him not. I love Him, I love Him now. Not anymore. Those So in that moment, we will enjoy the love that the Father have for the Son and the Son have for the Father. That same love we will experience in glory. That's why I hope you are excited to go there. Amen? Are you on your way? I'm on my way. Amen? I'm on my way to heaven. And if that is your reality... If that is what you are longing for, then we should have some resolves that we should do or we should observe in our life so that we can really live out what the gospel, what the Lord Jesus Christ is calling us while still here on earth. So I will go now to our life application, our simple takeaway for this message. Number one. Prioritize your eternal home over the temporary pleasures of this world. You know, it's good to have our own house on this earth because that is essential, that is not a luxury. But let us keep what our essentials to really essentials. You know, sometimes if you dream to have a big house, then you need to work and work and work and work and work and work more in order to pay for that big and big house. So prioritize your eternal home over the temporary pleasures or the temporary essentials of this world. Second, seek the things above where Christ is rather than being entangled by earthly desires. Seek the things above. Do not forget your Bible reading. Do not forget your meditation. And here in this church, we are making all the possible ways to get you into the Word because we don't know any other means. That's the only means we know to get you into the Word, to be nurtured by God's Word. 
That's why seek the things above. And thirdly, pursue genuine fellowship just like this and collaborate with fellow believers reflecting the unity found in the triune Godhead. We encourage you to attend the small groups. We encourage you to open small groups. Pursue genuine fellowship. Number four, fix your eyes on Jesus as you eagerly await his glorious return. Do not fix your eyes on the news because there are so many negative news and they are all beyond our control, right? It's how we wish we can stop the war. We can stop the suffering, but we can't. That's why I'll just, you know, whatever I see will be a point of prayer for me, but I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. <laughs> Lastly, Abide in Christ's love, allowing it to permeate every aspect of your life and relationship. Let the love of God dwell in your heart richly. May I call on you?